now I'd like to introduce um, Nancy Marr, who is going to very briefly tell us about the two Senate races on the ballot this March. Okay, well, I just want to make a few comments about this. Um, as you know, in March, the March primary, uh, voters are going to see the U.S. Senate election twice on the ballot. Um, the regularly scheduled election for the six-year Senate term that begins in 2025, and a special election to select a replacement to serve out the remainder of the late Diane Feinstein's term, which ends in January 2025. In November, the same two races will be on the November ballot, and voters will be asked to choose between the top two candidates in both races. Democrat LaFonza Butler was appointed by Ge Governor Newsom to fill Senator Feinstein's seat after her death. That is, yes. After, yeah. Yes, careful about my references here. Um, Currently, Senator Butler is filling that role, but in 2024, there will be an election to replace her with permanent a permanent California senator, even if it's only for a couple of months. California has historically allowed appointed senators to serve for the remainder of a term without an election if the term ends in January following the next regularly scheduled statewide election. But federal court rulings have suggested that California's longstanding practice of filling Senate seats could be illegal under the 17th Amendment of the Constitution, which mandates that senators be elected by the voters of the state. So in 1921, Governor Newsom signed a bill into law that requires a primary and general election to fill U.S. Seat, Senate seats. Therefore, um, California has scheduled special elections in March and November to fill the remainder of the late S Senator Dianne Feinstein seats. And so you are going to see in the primary the full term election and also the separate special election um, to uh, fill the seat that is currently occupied by appointee mm. Senator Butler and then will be occupied for the last uh, three months of the year by an elected senator per the Constitution. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, the, the important thing here, obviously, is vote seriously and with deliberation for the person that you want to fill the six-year full term. Yes. And and you, you don't have to share out if you want to vote for the same person for both those terms you can or different people for the terms. That's that's your choice as a voter. Right. And there are um, about a dozen, dozen running for the short term and 27 for the full term. So it's a lot of people to look at. Not quite a dozen for the short term, but that's yeah. OK. Yeah, I think. Okay, Margie Hoyt. Seven. Um, so the term is ending, the full term is ending on 2025. So when would, so if Feinstein had stayed, would we be voting for her in, in, for that office in November or would there be a separate election when? I mean, I don't no. understand. So um, <laughs> in, in the primary and in November, the two seats are up. One is the regular seat that is a six-year term that begins in January. Okay. It is it is the seat that Feinstein had occupied, but she was not going to go on anyway. In uh, in you know, and then her death ensued. Mm -hmm. So the others, the other seat that's up is called a special election. It is to place a person as an elected senator, as opposed to an appointed senator, in office for the remainder of the term from November to January. That's all that that person gets is three months. Does that help, 
Margie? I understand it, even if I disagree with that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but no, I, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I, yeah, I, I, but it, it's, it is weird. And I think that um, had the, uh, had Feinstein's death been earlier than it was, or had she resigned earlier, with a, a special election might have been called at that time. But uh, since since the general election was coming up in November of 2024, they filled in with an appointment until that general election. And then to comply with the US Constitution, they have to put that seat up at the general election. Strange, right. but true. Right. And I think that this person will actually only get to vote on um, the electoral college vote. I doubt that there's very much else that happens before uh, the new oh, person yeah. is seated. It isn't, <laughs> a, it isn't a time of year where there's a lot of action. Yeah. Is, this, is this legislation federal or state? State. Uh, state. The U.S. Constitution is federal. Right. And the state changed its election law to a really lot. clarify the fact that they would be following the the Seventeenth Amendment. Yeah, I agree. because they were they were criticized was the whole thing. Okay, well, thank you so much, Nancy. That helps a lot. And the message is, please vote, especially for the full six year term. <laughs> and uh, now we would like to move on to. Uh, Valerie Morshigi, who is going to tell us a little bit about our new voter information website, Vote 411. Okay. All right. So uh, I just want to say thank you to all of the volunteers that are working on Vote 411. We have 26 people throughout the county that are calling candidates for this. And according to my calculations, we've had, um, let's see, we have 413 candidates and we've had 222 contacts already. So, um, and as Margot said earlier, we're up to 33% of the candidates responding and which roughly um, comes out to 139 candidates. So um, we'll keep calling them and keep urging them to fill this out. But so you can see what this looks like, you just go to for, vote411.org and you're going to scroll down here to personalize voting information and you're going to put in, let's see, let's put in the league address because I remember that one <laughs> and Los Angeles, California 90010. So we're going to submit that. Uh, no, thanks. And it tells you this information here about your upcoming elections. It also has the registration deadlines. One thing that they don't mention here for these deadlines is that you can request your crossover ballot if you're a no party preference voter, or you can re-register in person at a vote center. So you have all the way until March 5th for um, a lot of these registration deadlines because we have same day voter registration here in California. So we can see that this is our address we inputted for your voting selections. You can also make a language selection. So over here, we also have Spanish available. So I'm gonna click English here and I'm gonna click save and view races. From here, you can see that it has all of our races listed, all of those judges that we were talking er about earlier. We have our school board, district attorney has all of the local measures also. So you can see it's in the city of Los Angeles. We have measure HLA. And here are the two Senator terms that we just discussed. And the statewide prop one is right here also. So let's go into, let's see, I think the district attorneys, some of yeah. these have filled out there. So let's look at these. And also a plug, we will be having a Los Angeles County District Attorney uh, candidate forum on February 12th. And I'm sure Margo will send out all of that information. There's a couple of links that are mixed up on the webpage, but we will get that sorted out and share that with everyone. 
So here we go. If we view the race, it'll show you all of the candidates. And you can see everyone also has the option to upload a photo, which is super helpful. And this is a lot of people to compare. So what you can do is you can go into these folks and uh, view answers. And so what clicking on this will do is you can scroll down and you'll see Deborah Archuleta's information. So their top three priorities, their background and experience, and any endorsements that they like to list. It also has their ballot designation and their website information, and also their Instagram and Facebook URL. Oh, Twitter too. And now you're like, I don't wanna look at these people one by one, that's very exhausting. So what you can do is you can scroll back up here and you can compare answers. So I can see that Jeff probably hasn't filled this out yet. So I'm going to click on George, John, Nathan, Dan, Lloyd. Oh, Lloyd filled it out. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have called him several times. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to click through on the folks that I see. They have probably um, inputted their information. And you can see that all of them will show up side by side. So you can view all of this yet. So you can see Eric, um, he has no responses yet, but he already did upload his photo. So as long as they've answered one question and um, they will have their, um, their information uploaded. And the thing is, uh, they can go in and edit at any time. So throughout all the way to March 5th, they can change whatever is listed here. So, and it'll go through and with the question, it'll show what their answers are for each thing. And there are um, word, word, what is it called? Word limits on how much they can put into the information. And I think some of them are like 5,000 words long yeah. or, um, <laughs> yeah, but we, we advise them that shorter is usually better for voters. So you can see they took our advice to heart. They kept it pretty short and sweet for most of these. And you can see there's a read more, so you can see if it's a little bit longer. And then what you can do from here is you can choose my choice. And what that does is when you go all the way, now this is not saying that I'm endorsing Deborah, so you all know she was just the first one there and that's why I picked that. But if you go to the next race, you can also choose a candidate from here and make that my choice. And then you can save and next, and you'll, oh, where'd it go? And then you can go to your voter guide. Oh, it didn't, shoot. It's supposed to give you a page of all of the mm -hmm. of the things. Hold on. So save and view races. Okay, and then you can print your current ballot summary. So I need to go through and choose some things. Make this person my choice. And then where is that button? So there it is. Save and next, next, next. I think you might have to save all of these. And the LA um, LAVote.gov also has an interactive sample ballot where you can um, do this kind of similar thing, and it will create a poll pass for you. So I've gone through all the selections, I'll click finish. And then it'll show me who I actually voted for in those races. So you can see there and prop one. So that way you can take this handy little guide, you can print it out. And you can see your selected candidates and a cheat sheet and you can take that with you to your um, vote center if you're voting in person. Or maybe you want to discuss um, who you're voting for with your friends. And so you can print it out and mail it to them and email it to them. And then you can compare your voting selection, see where you might differ. Um, it's just a real easy way to um, have that on hand because looking through your vote by mail ballot can become kind of 
um, confusing when it's so many pages. Right. Well, thank you. Now, any Valerie. questions? I noticed that if you when you scrolled all the way down, there is a place where um, candidate forums and debates can be listed. Mm -hmm. And that is something that uh, each of our leagues can be doing to uh, advertise the candidate forums that we have set up for whether it's supervisor or DA or local office, because many, some of you have local office on your uh, ballot. Uh, LA has uh, city council, Pasadena has city council. So you can, you can publicize the forums and debates that you're sponsoring also. Um, and it unfortunately isn't quite as attractive a website as Voters Edge was but it still has a lot of useful information and we appreciate all the work that all of our uh, volunteers are doing to harass our candidates until they finally put up the answers to our questions. Yeah, yeah. you can see the Glendale candidate forum is here. That's for the Unified School District and we'll be doing that on February 7th. So, um, yeah, this is a very handy tool um, that you can share with folks. And I know um, I know that there's several places that we'll be speaking about this in the upcoming days. So I hope you all find this useful and thank you so much. Valerie, do you want to give another plug for the district attorney forum? Yes. So the um, Los Angeles County District Attorney Candidate Forum is going to be on February 12th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. at Los Angeles City College. We'll also have a live streaming option and that's via Zoom. You just have to register for that. And it will be in a webinar format and we will also have ASL and Spanish interpreters via Zoom. So we won't have that service available live, but it will be avail uh, live in person, but we'll have it available live on Zoom. So um, we will share out all of those links, I'm sure. Um, and um, yeah, it should be really interesting. Our co-sponsors are uh, the ACLU, SoCal, Los Angeles City College, uh, let's see, NAMI Urban Los Angeles, NAMI Los Angeles County, and the District Attorney Accountability Coalition. So we're kind of asking questions that are like, you know, the, the burning questions, but we're also asking questions that maybe they haven't been asked in other candidate forms before. So we hope uh, you'll be able to make it. And if not, we will make sure that the recording's on vote 411. So thank you. Thank you very much. And as far as I know, the um, link to register that went out in the county voter actually works. So um, if <clears throat> league presidents and league voter editors, please circulate the county voter that came out on um, about January 16th uh, to your members so that they have the opportunity to sign up for this online <clears throat> candidate forum. Thank you again, Valerie. We really appreciate this. Now it's time for local league announcements. Are there any other announcements besides the DA forum that we want to share with uh, all our attendees? You can uh, raise your hand or put it in the chat. So nothing else is going on. I know that uh, PV and Beach Cities are having an event uh, in the next month if they want to talk about it. And Grace, you have something? Well, I just want to make a plug for the water and infrastructure group that Kathy and I uh, put on that um, like there was this recent flooding in San Diego County and San Diego County had known that it had flooding issues, but did not have money to address them. And that's why we passed Measure W and we had people come to us, talk about Measure W and what that's doing. And um, I'm also hosting a, uh, a rain garden tour of my garden on February 10th to show people things that you can do to help out our, store, our shared storm system. 
Grace. <clears throat> mm. So, Margo, I'm, I, uh, this is Linda Herman from the Palos Verdes uh, League of Women Voters. I'm sorry my picture isn't up there, but I did want to mention we're having a, 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 a tri-league brunch on Saturday, February 3rd at the Depot Restaurant. We're having Joe uh, Trigilio, uh, Executive Director of Loyola's Project for the Innocent. It begins at 9.30 and it ends uh, about noon, and it's going to be at the Depot Restaurant. Um, if you're interested in attending, my email, oops, sorry, my email is, is lhermanpg at cox.net. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, that's February the 3rd at the Depot in, in I missed the city, in Torrance. Uh, <clears throat> are, there any, are there any forums for the Senate seats? or for the um, Board of Supervisors? The County League is not sponsoring any uh, supervisor forms at this point. Uh, uh, local leagues may be involved in those and any other um, <clears throat> assembly or Senate seats, which often cross boundaries of leagues uh, would be useful to hear about. If you would like to have them publicized by the County League, you can send the information to me, um, <clears throat> which is margolwv at gmail.com. Um, or, <clears throat> and we will put them in the County Newsletter, which will go out about February 15th. Okay, there will be, there was a YouTube, um, or there was a debate among the Senate, U.S. Senate candidates on oh, a week ago, and that is available on YouTube. There will be another U.S. Senate candidate uh, debate also on February 12th at 7 p.m. on Channel 5. So there will be some opportunities to evaluate U.S. Senate candidates. Um, And are there any other uh, local announcements that people would like to make? Yes, if I could really quick, we have, um, we're also doing speakers bureaus, uh, speaking engagements here at Los Angeles, and we have 10 speaking engagements about the primaries. So just letting folks know that we're doing that in case you hear about what are y'all doing? No, oh, that's excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, Kathy Coonies. Um, I will unmute. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. Come on. Um, the Pasadena Area League is having an L.A. District Attorney Candidate Forum on the um, 12th at 4 o'clock um, in Altadena. Um, I believe it's at Farnsworth Park. How can you do that? Uh, DA or supervisor? It's DA candidate forum. But the DA, that's the exact same date and time as the LA one is doing it at LA City College. So, um. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm getting it mixed up. That's got to be it. It's on, I know we're doing one. Oh, it's a supervisor's one. And I'm the looking su on date. Yeah, supervisor. And that would be I fifth district. That. We have supervisor. a supervisor's one, too. And I'm looking at the wrong. I'm trying to do this from my calendar because I don't remember the dates. Um, um, it is on the 21st of February at Farnsworth Park. Excellent. So 5th District Supervisor, which is Catherine Barger, and uh, several challengers, uh, Constantine Anthony and Chris Holden and Perry Goldberg. And notice I'm doing this by memory, people. <laughs> I spent yeah. a lot of time on vote 411. Um, so we'll have to get information on that out and in, into the into the countywide voter. Um, right. And I it don't can have be posted on it either. It can be posted on our website also. If yeah. you send it, just send, if you want something posted on the county website, please send it to Fatima Malik. And that's fmolik2085 at gmail.com. 
Are there any other uh, league events happening in the next month that people would like to share? Well, good luck to all of you as you get out and explain Prop 1 and uh, take the opportunity, if you're not doing a pro and con, to get into details about why Prop 1 uh, and the league are not uh, aligned. <laughs> Use your net, uh, LA, LWVC website to get good detailed information about Prop 1. <clears throat> Use Vote 411, and you are able to urge the candidates to participate in Vote 411. It's not terribly helpful if all we see is their picture. So uh, any help that our team of 26 can get to uh, pressure candidates to actually post the answers to the questions would be much, much appreciated. Are there any other comments or questions? Um, yes, it is the Supervisor District 5 candidate forum being held in Altadena by LWV Pasadena area on the 21st. Okay, well, thank you so much. We had a, a very outstanding turnout today. I think that people learned a huge amount about um, how judges are evaluated, what they're evaluated on, and how we can learn more about the judicial candidates. Please share this information with your friends because too many people um, feel that they don't have enough information to make a decision and therefore they opt out of the judicial elections. I'd like to thank all my league staff and league speakers for helping put this uh, league day on. It's a lot of, of pre-work and uh, a lot of technical expertise that goes into any league day. Thank you again, and thank you to all the participants who joined us today.